It's October 1st, 2020 in San Diego, California, and Nathan Williams is waking up to another day on top of BMX World. You would never know it by talking to the guy, but he's one of the top BMX street riders in the game, with accolades and accomplishments that rival some of sporting's best. At only 32 years of age, his career has been steadily gaining iconic status for over a decade with no signs of slowing down anytime soon. 2020 has thrown surprises at everyone around the world, but the one thing that is not surprising is the year Nathan has had. Three epic video parts, national television appearances, international contests, a section in the Nora Cup Video of the Year, and the 2020 Nora Cup Street Rider of the Year Award. While most people would sit back and take the winner off, we are about to follow Nathan on one of his solo trips to watch him recharge, disconnect, reconnect, and keep pushing forward on and off his bike. This is Nathan Williams, here and now. For me, it's just uh, the older I've gotten, the more I've learned to like that I need to uh, take time just every once in a while, you know, to come out and do these kinds of things. I get a lot of motivation in it, motivation for other things like riding, and it's a good time to like think about like how much you appreciate family, friends, and all that kind of stuff. I like these trips because, you know, obviously I bring my bike and um, I like to stop, you know, at random little skate parks and towns and the main purpose of the trip isn't doing it for riding. Um, the riding is kind of like a bonus or icing on the cake. I do this more for the experience of just driving. I, I just like thinking, maybe get in my head a little bit, but like while I'm driving, you know, it's a, a good time to almost like zone out, uh, maybe like a meditation state in a way that you're not like thinking about anything in particular you know and then you got the the contrast of that like going on trips for champagne and stuff like that you know where it's like the whole crew and everyone's getting it and everyone's you know super motivated and I almost feel like you can't even compare the two because they're completely different I it really enjoy those trips you know you feel productive and everyone's motivated everyone's vibing off each other and so right after I got on Kink in 2018, they had already been filming, I think, for like six months. So I came into it a little late. Just Kink has a really good like family feel to it. Everybody gets along. I felt very honored to be able to be a part of a squad like that. Get on the team and instantly start filming, because for me, that's like one of the funnest things you can do. So that made me very comfortable pretty quickly. You just jump in a van with everybody, and after the first trip, feel like you've been there for a long time. Nathan deserves a brand like Kink to support him as hard and as long as we can. BMX needs guys like him. Kids need guys like him. I couldn't imagine the brand without him at this point. From all the guys that paved the way for him to have the opportunity with the brand now, I couldn't ask for a better setup. Yeah, whenever Fudger showed up with the Nora Cup, I think we were all pretty blown away, except for Jay, because Jay already knew. But that was just the last thing that I personally thought was going to happen. You know, the Nora Cup happened, and that was just like a huge icing and a cherry on top the whole day. So it was pretty unexpected, but awesome. And then whenever he pulled out the Street Rider Award, I had to like squint and like, what are you pulling out of the bag? I was not expecting that kind of that day to, to go like that. 
the value that a, a rider like Nathan brings to the team is goes far beyond just you know the amount of frames that you sell. He's actually the oldest guy on the team. When I say old, he's he's, you know, he's 32 years old, but on the trips, he's there to be Nathan Williams, a rider, and everyone knows that how good he is. Everyone knows what he can do, but what people don't see is is what other people get off of him. The influence that he has on even other professional bike riders, whether it's mentality towards things or preparation or actual riding. The squad looks up to him big time. He, he, he may or may not know it, but, but they do. He's more or less a mentor to him and probably a lot of kids, just by the way he carries himself. Um, and even the little glimpse that people get to see in the video parts is enough to see like, wow, this is somebody that is special. Yeah, Jameson's like the the best companion you could have on the road. Whether it's solo, just me and him, or whether it's me and him and you know everyone in the van, <laughs> he's down. He's down for anything. For the most part, easygoing. He can keep up with everybody, even though he's in, getting a little older these days. But uh, he can keep up, and he's a good companion to have. Years back, I got him registered as a, as a service animal, mainly just because it just gets difficult to try to find someone to watch him uh, whenever you're traveling so much. I feel like unconsciously made the decision, all right, you're going everywhere with me. And he pretty much has. You know, he goes on planes with me, and I try not to, like, abuse the whole service animal thing. Like, if I have to, he'll go into restaurants with me, or he's a good dog. He doesn't really run off. If he does, he's usually just around the corner eating some trash or something. Uh, but he's good. He, he normally just stays around, and he's been around bikes so long that it's pretty cool. I can tell him, you know, if he's in the way of somebody or me trying to film, I can just tell him to move, and he, like, somehow knows what's up. <laughs> and he'll get out of the way. He never talks back to me, so that's good. At least I know I'm still somewhat sane. Yeah, he's good. I mean, he just chills in the car whenever we're driving, and then whenever we get out, he does this. <laughs> uh, so he's got a, he's got a good contrast to both sides. <laughs> I do feel like he can talk to him. I would say he's the best loyal companion I could ask for. It's been a crazy year, uh, and. Honestly, one of the more positive things for us has been watching all the stuff that Nathan has provided content-wise, footage-wise, inspiration-wise. So when coming up with the project to do for this fall, it made sense to just send the guy on a trip that he'd do by himself already, but we'll pay for it. Want him to go have fun. Basically want him to just relax and enjoy being him and not feel the pressure and stress of what he deals with on an almost daily basis sometimes. So. This trip was about getting Nathan out there, just having fun. He's in control, and uh, his sponsors are behind him. I got up with Will from Cinema, and we decided, like, you know, this guy deserves him more than anybody. Let's let's send him out on a trip to uh, stay healthy. It's crazy to say that 2020 is Nathan's 10th year on Cinema, which having a rider like him on the team for going on a decade now is a huge honor, and it's been a privilege to be his filmer and team manager for this long. Getting to see the stuff that Nathan has done, stuff that he continues putting out, getting to hear him talk about what he wants to do next. When Nathan joined the Kink team in 2018, both Kink and Cinema are under the blackout distribution roof in Rochester, New York. So I decided to reach out to the Kink guys to see how we could team up and do something cool for Nathan, unlike what he's been doing, which is putting out stellar video parts. 
what could we do that would be different and fun for Nathan, Kink, and Cinema putting all their forces together. Some time went by, we couldn't figure out exactly what kind of special project to do with Nathan. And then this fall, Jay and I started talking again, and we decided, let's send Nathan on a fun road trip. With no stress, go camping, take your dog with you, we'll tag along, small camera crew, document the madness. You know, I've been going to Vegas for years now. You know, the first time I went there was on the cinema market trip in 2014. You know, I think whenever I first started going there uh, was for actually for Interbike, and I'd never ridden there. All I'd seen was the strip, and it was kind of like a love hate kind of thing with that place. You know, it just was super hectic and whatnot. But the first time I went there to ride, I saw a whole new side of the city outside the strip, which is great. Almost felt like Phoenix or Tucson or Albuquerque or one of those kind of more desert cities. And then also, you know, once you start like seeing the spots that are there and and getting a good good vibe of the city it, uh, is a place that I have become to love, at least for, you know, riding and stuff. No dig, no ride. There is something happening that isn't too clear. Just a little different than a previous year. I think the happiness is getting very near. I'm checking out the show with a glass of eye. Looking at the sun dancing through the sky, did it come by you before? Did it come by you before? Did it come by you before? I think exploration means to me is just freedom. The freedom to be creative in whatever way you want to be, and also freedom to see things the way you see them, you know, because you'll see the same spot differently than your friend. You know, that aspect of exploring a new city or even ex re exploring your hometown, it's just this exciting, freeing feeling to me. Not to like say we're so special, but I think that is something that, that we get that I think a lot of people, you'd say like a normal person or whatever, doesn't necessarily get, even in their own city, is the aspect of seeing every grimy little alleyway or every behind every building and really kind of feeling, feeling like you know the city. And then especially when you go to a new city, you know, a lot of people, they do the touristy things and that's great. but you don't really see the city. You know, you see the part of the city that the city wants you to see. You get the, the real feel of that city. It's pretty, pretty cool. I think the, the motivation for me has just come from new experiences. Like, I find satisfaction in working hard. I say working, it's not work, but pushing yourself. I find satisfaction in that. So I think there's an aspect of it that that's my motivation is just like wanting to be productive, wanting to move forward um, in some sort of way. If you just go to ride your bike, you know, every day, a lot of times, like, you end up learning new stuff or, yeah, I think as long as you don't put too much pressure on it, you know. It's like the same thing going with, like, being flexible. I've gone through times where 
go on a trip and it's like, okay, I want to get fucking 10 clips. You know? Well, you come back with five. And it's like, oh, that sucks. But So then I started learning, like, just don't have any expectations. Yeah, just no expectations. And a lot of times things just work out if you got a good attitude, you know. Of course, and that's just like my brain. Sometimes I do that, like I'll be like, why do we fucking want to jump down a 25 stair rail? Like, why? I mean, I know why I do it, because it's fun. And then you get a thrill out of it, and it's challenging, and you have an idea of something you want to do, and like being able to do that is like satisfying. And I think I appreciate these trips a lot more than I would have, uh, say, even like two years ago, just because I didn't have I didn't want to slow down enough to like do stuff like this and yeah it's just kind of a new thing for me like doing this kind of thing with a trip I don't know like going through like a divorce and stuff like that there was times where I was still having fun on trips but I was also like doing everything I can not to like think doing something that was scary so I could shut my brain off to do that or drinking 20 drinks and passing out you know like before it was just like my life was just too fast to like have any relationship but now it's like a little slower in the sense where I like yeah I take time to like spend time with the people that I love you know and actually like try and call people back <laughs> you know which is it is terrible I know it's terrible I'd even do that to my parents you know like not talk to them for like two weeks and not because I don't want to it's just I don't want to be on the phone I don't want to slow down long enough for like 15 minutes to like talk and I would sleep in too, for sure. Like, I was always the last one at the van. If I sleep 12 hours and I feel good, but it's one o'clock by the time I get out, I'll ride better for those six hours or five hours or whatever. My routine is somewhat not having a routine in a way. And I think some people might say it's like a little lazy, but it's something that I've just come to realize, you know what, I, I've been given this opportunity and I shouldn't feel bad if I'm taking advantage of that every once in a while. Because for me, I think like the aspect of longevity or uh, just being able to like do what you do to the best of your ability for the longest period of time that you can is mind health, mental health, and the way your body feels. If you're taking care of that aspect of your life, everything kind of like seems to fall into place. Oh, so stopped and tried to ride this school. The school looks completely dead. Uh, and the custodian came out and said, what do you say, Jameson needed to be on a leash. So I was getting the leash for Jamo. He saw me grind the rail and he, uh, he rolled over and said he was gonna call 911. 911? Actually, he asked us, he said he can't be riding bikes on the property. I said, okay, we'll get out of here. And then he said he's going to call 911 and then proceeded to take photos of my car and license plate. So, I don't know, he seemed a little nervous for whatever reason. I was like, come on, bro. Like, you're being nice. That's how it goes sometimes, I guess. Honestly, sometimes it does ruin my day, and I hate to admit that. Uh, but that's also just my my mindset already for the day you know maybe I'm a little frustrated about something else or you know really wanted to get this certain trick and so then it could be kind of frustrating um, but you know at the end of the day you gotta understand they're doing their job so you know you could get mad but it's not gonna change <laughs> change the situation if anything in my experience it makes it worse uh, so gotta just roll with it. There's always another spot to go to, so. So that's what we do. All right, buddy. He never gets mad. I had the body let him go. Mama told Papa, that ain't right, going and staying out all night, you got to buy it up and go. Oh man, I love Lake City. I've been coming here for quite a few years now uh, with my family for vacation and I just like the feel of it. It's a small little town, it's got one road going through it. There's tons of good hikes, just a lot of good outdoors stuff. It has a nice energy, a nice vibe. 
Uh, so we're gonna go do this little hike. Actually, my little brother, had, he showed me for the first time. So yeah, we're gonna drive down this road for a few miles and see what the hike's all about. My immediate family and then some of my aunts and uncles and my grandmother and stuff, they'll come up here and get a cabin every couple years. And so we just started going with them and I started doing some hikes with like my little brother. He's way more outdoorsy than I am. But so he's the first one that, that took me up here to the lake. And yeah, just the, the more times that I come here, it just makes me want to come back. Like, yeah, with hiking, I enjoy the physical part of it uh, the most. It's one thing I feel like the hiking is really good for like your knees and your legs for riding and stuff, you know? There's an aspect of like the, the cardio of it or, you know, it's good for your body, good for my knees and stuff. And then I feel like good afterwards. And it's always nice to like hike up to something beautiful, eat some lunch and chill for a little while. I like recharge or reset or whatever you want to call it by myself. It gives me time to like think, process things a little bit more. There's a beautiful aspect to, to all of this. It's kind of funny, somewhat of a, maybe a backwards way of looking at it, but I've learned that if I can take that time away from BMX, that it actually ends up making me more motivated to ride. Every once in a while, go on a week camping trip or whatever, and taking a break from certain things, in turn, that actually ends up giving me more energy to ride and still have genuine fun riding my bike. You got to buy it up and go, yeah, baby. Denver is a pretty awesome, special place to me. It's like a big city, mountain town vibe, sort of. But I think the first time I came here was back in 2012 uh, for an Etni cinema trip. bulk of the way done filming this documentary when we found out that Nathan won video part of the year for his video part with Christian Ergal. Why not? Street Rider of the Year and Video Part of the Year are two of the highest accolades a BMXer could ever hope to get. Nathan's legacy, Nathan's pages in the BMX history books should really be about hard work and passion and commitment to what you're doing. He's 
exemplified all that and more in all the video parts that he's put out. It should never be overlooked how easy he makes bike riding look and how nice his video parts look. It should never be overlooked how hard and how at times traumatizing that you have to go through to create what he's created. That shouldn't be overlooked. It's easy to overlook that because you can't see it. It's monumental. What's the future hold for Nathan Williams? Pfft, no idea. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I feel like I should because that's what people do. But I just never know. The more I think about that stuff, it stresses me out. And it's like thinking about something that's like really out of your control anyways. So like why worry about it, you know? In my experiences, it's like the saying, you can plan a pretty picnic, but you can't plan the weather, you know? Like I think is funny, but true in the sense that like, it's good to have ambitions, but I think it's more important to be flexible. Try to look at every experience in that you can learn something from it. Because you can learn something from it. You gotta see the beauty in all of it. It's kind of like anything. It's not about the destination, it's about the journey. It sounds corny, but it's true. You just gotta get out there and enjoy it, you know? And that's the way that you're gonna meet other riders. That's the way, that, you know, if, if that's what you're trying to do, that's the way you'll get your name out there, whatever it is that your goal is. If it's BMX related, traveling's gonna be a huge aspect of it. Gotta get out there and enjoy it. I am 100% grateful, very, very grateful for uh, the lifestyle that BMX has, has given me. It just has enabled me to, I think, have a different outlook on life. It's going to be a very endearing feeling looking back, I think, whenever I'm older at all of this. And I don't think there's, you know, there's not going to be one negative aspect to it. That eye for spots will always be there. So even when I'm old and like, you know, sitting on the porch or whatever and can't ride anymore, that's still gonna be such a big part of my life. Everything that I've experienced so far has made me into who I am and like the way I see the world and my values and what I think is important. And so there's so many aspects of BMX that I'm gonna look back on and, and be so thankful for. You know, on top of all the great times that I had, you know, got to travel with my friends, I'm getting to essentially have my retirement years in my early 30s and all of my 20s. And that's something that a lot of people don't get to experience, you know? It's gonna be cool looking back on it. Just gonna keep riding day by day. <laughs> no real plan, just living in the here and now.